Greetings. My name is Linda and I'm 31 years old. I always thought I had a strong relationship with my mother-in-law, Melissa. From our first meeting, her warm smile made me feel welcome and I truly believed she cared about me. However, I was unaware that beneath her friendly exterior, Melissa was secretly plotting to create discord between my husband, Scott, and me. Melissa would call Scott daily while I was at work. Initially, I didn't give it much thought. It seemed normal for a mother to want to keep in touch with her son. But over time, I noticed a shift in Scott's attitude towards me. He grew cold, and at times his behavior towards me was filled with animosity. Confused by this sudden change, I addressed it one evening when we were alone. Scott, is everything okay? You've been acting differently, I asked. His response was curt. I'm fine, Linda. Just leave me alone. Isn't that what you want? He snapped back. Puzzled, I pressed on. What are you talking about? He accused me angrily. Do you just want to take all my money and leave? I was stunned and hurt by his accusation. How could you think I would do such a thing? Where is all this coming from? I demanded, deeply offended by his words. Scott sighed deeply, his demeanor shifting as he sat down, burying his face in his hands. He seemed tormented. I'm so sorry for lashing out, Linda. It's just that something's been troubling me, he confessed. What's going on, love? You know we can face anything together, I reassured him, hoping to ease his burden. He hesitated, then admitted, Linda, it's hard to say this, but my mom has been saying unfavorable things about you during our calls. I was shocked. Melissa, the woman I considered almost like a second mother, speaking ill of me? Initially, I couldn't bring myself to believe what Scott was telling me. How could she do this to us? How could she disrupt the harmony of our family with such deceit? As my doubts began to cloud my judgment, I cautiously approached Scott. Are you sure you're not misreading what she's saying? Sometimes communication between men and women can get mixed up. Maybe it's just a misunderstanding? But Scott was firm in his belief. I'm not misinterpreting anything, Linda. It's clear to me. My mother has taken a dislike to you, and it's not just a misunderstanding, he insisted. I was stunned. That's hard to believe. I responded, Just last week, Melissa and I had a pleasant chat. I shared our recent successes and our plans to start the business we've always dreamed of. Scott countered with a troubling revelation. That's ironic because she told me today that you're planning to hijack our business plans, register everything under your name, and then vanish with all the profits. I was flabbergasted. That's absurd, Scott. Why would she say such things? Scott sighed, a mix of frustration and confusion in his voice. I know it sounds crazy and I hate to admit it, but her words have been gnawing at me. I started to believe her accusations, so I snapped at you earlier. I'm sorry. Determined to resolve this, I proposed a plan. If you're convinced that I won't believe you, let's prove it together. Next time she calls, let's arrange a way for me to listen in without her knowing. How about you connect me through a Zoom call on your computer and you take her call on speakerphone? This way, I can hear everything she says. That sounds like a good plan, Scott agreed, hopeful that this would clear the air, and so we set the plan into motion. The very next day, as I headed out to work and Scott stayed home, he prepared for the call. True to our arrangement, he added me to a conference call while he answered his mother's call on speaker. Unaware of my silent presence, Melissa began the conversation with usual pleasantries before quickly shifting to express her concerns. How was your day, Scott? She asked. It was fine, Mom. And yours? He replied. It was stressful. I've been worried about you, especially given your predicament, she said her voice laden with concern. What predicament? Scott probed, playing along. The fact that you're married to such a deceitful woman, she blurted out, revealing her true feelings about me without any hesitation. As I listened, hidden on the other line, the reality of Melissa's animosity became painfully clear. 
Her words were not just misinterpretations, they were deliberate and harmful. She doesn't love you, Scott. How much more do I need to say for you to see the truth? Melissa's words to her son were steeped in distress. These things affect me too, you know. The longer you're with that woman, the more it shaves years off my life due to stress. Mom, please stop, Scott interjected, his patience waning. I haven't found any proof of what you're claiming, so please stop with these baseless accusations. So you're calling me a liar now? You don't want to listen to my advice? Melissa retorted sharply. I'm just telling you the truth. She hates you. She's going to take all your money and leave you if you're not careful. Let me call you back, okay? Love you. Wait, let me tell you more. But Scott had had enough. He hung up the phone and then unmuted me from the conference call. Hello, Linda. How could she speak about you like that? Has she lost her mind? Scott was shaken. I know it's a lot to take in. I'm sorry you had to hear all this, but it was important for you to know the truth firsthand, he said. I'm speechless, honestly. She sounded like a completely different person, not at all like the sweet lady who used to check up on me, I responded, my voice heavy with disbelief. Now I see she's only been pretending to care to gather information and twist it to make you distrust me. As the reality of Melissa's deceit sank in, I felt a profound sense of betrayal. The person I once considered an ally and supporter was actively working against me. Scott reassured me. I no longer believe her words, especially after our conversation last night. That woman is unbelievable. I almost fell for her lies, even though I've trusted and believed her as my mother. I understand, babe. It must be hard realizing the extent of her lies and deception, especially because she's your mom, I said, trying to comfort him. I'm more angry than anything. I don't know what she hopes to gain by speaking so harshly and frequently ill of you, but at least now you've seen it for yourself, Scott added, frustration evident in his voice. She's completely lost it, he continued. Yes, we need to confront her about everything. Yes, of course, but maybe not just yet, I suggested, pausing thoughtfully. What do you mean? I thought now that we know we could just confront her, Scott said, surprised by my hesitation. I'd like to listen in on a few more phone calls, please, I requested, needing more evidence to understand the full scope of Melissa's manipulation. Scott was taken aback by my request, thinking one conversation had been enough to take action. But I felt we needed a fuller picture before confronting Melissa about her deceitful behavior. If there's one thing I've learned about master manipulators, it's that they relish the opportunity to play with people's perceptions and memories. Confronting Melissa too hastily could give her the chance to gaslight us, making us doubt our understanding of her words. As painful as it was to hear her spiteful accusations, I knew I needed more evidence. I wanted to record these instances to have undeniable proof of her demeaning comments when I finally confronted her. The next day, and for about three more weeks, Scott would secretly add me to the calls as we had planned. Melissa, oblivious to my presence, continued her usual tirade of belittling and false accusations. Despite growing accustomed to her deceit, I was still shocked by her ability to distort simple, innocent interactions from our past, turning them into something sinister and painting me as the villain. With each covert phone call, my anger grew, fueling my determination to expose Melissa's true character. This wasn't just for my vindication anymore. It was crucial to protect others who might also fall victim to her manipulative tactics. These recorded conversations had transformed into key pieces of evidence, crucial for revealing Melissa's manipulative nature. As I braced myself to confront her, I knew it wouldn't be easy to challenge a family member who had woven such a web of deceit. Yet I was comforted by Scott's unwavering support, ready to stand by me against the barrage of lies we were sure to face. After enduring these weeks of secretive listening and collecting evidence, I was fed up with the incessant undermining from my mother-in-law. It was time to take a stand. One evening, Scott and I sat in our living room strategizing our approach to finally confronting Melissa. Just as we were about to refine our plan, the shrill ring of my phone cut through the quiet. 
It was Melissa calling me directly, likely another one of her so-called friendly check-ins. After discovering Melissa's deceit, I was furious and ready to confront her immediately. However, Scott hesitated, suggesting we pause. Wait, babe, I know you want to address this now, but maybe we should hold off for just a moment, he advised. Why? What for? I questioned, barely containing my anger. For starters, we don't know why she's calling. Maybe she's calling to confess. It's unlikely, but still a possibility, he reasoned. Please, just listen to what she has to say. If she doesn't come clean and apologize by the end of this call, then we can go ahead with your plan for revenge. No questions asked, Scott pleaded, his voice tinged with hope. She's still my mom, Linda. I guess part of me hopes she's realized her mistakes and will change. I just need to be sure. Seeing the pain in Scott's eyes reminded me of the toll this situation was also taking on him. I realized I had been so consumed by my feelings that I hadn't fully considered his struggle. All right, I'll hold off on confronting her for now, I reluctantly agreed. Thank you, Linda, Scott replied, his voice filled with relief. I took a deep breath and answered the phone, my tone guarded but resolute. Hello, my dear, how are you? Melissa's voice carried the usual sugary sweetness, which now just fueled my ire. I'm fine, Melissa. How are you? I managed to say, keeping my composure. Melissa seemed slightly taken aback by the coolness in my voice, but I was determined not to let her manipulate the conversation this time. As much as I wasn't ready to lay all the cards on the table just yet, I couldn't resist the urge to hint at my awareness of her schemes. I wanted her to sense that something was different, that her actions were not as hidden as she believed. Oh, darling, are you sure you're fine? You sound so upset, she probed, feigning concern. I suppose I'm a bit upset, Melissa. You see, I've recently come across some rather shocking news, I said, playing it cool yet firm. What news, dear? She inquired, her voice a mix of curiosity and caution. Well, it turns out that someone has been speaking very unkindly about me, slandering my name for no clear reason. Perhaps out of jealousy or something else, I continued, my words deliberate. Oh dear, how awful, Melissa responded, her tone attempting to mirror sympathy. Yes, it is awful. Melissa, have you ever encountered someone so cruel who would harm another's reputation for no apparent reason? I asked pointedly, turning the conversation subtly toward her behavior. The brief silence that followed was telling. Through this carefully veiled dialogue, I aimed to let her know that I was on to her, setting the stage for a confrontation that, though delayed, was inevitable. I think we need to continue this conversation tomorrow, dear. I'm suddenly feeling very tired. I'm sorry, let's talk tomorrow, Melissa hastily said before hanging up the phone abruptly. Before I could even react to her swift exit from the call, Scott's phone buzzed with a new notification. It was a text message from Melissa. Got another update on your slimy wife. Someone else has been talking about her too. Turns out I'm not the only one who thinks she's no good. You need to get out of that situation while you can. I'll call you tomorrow while she's at work to tell you the full story. Scott and I were both stunned and deeply hurt by her continued deception. The sight of the text seemed to crush any remaining doubt Scott had about his mother's duplicity. He looked ready to take decisive action. We need to stop her, Linda. How can she continue to be so deceitful? He said, his voice filled with a mix of anger and resolve. It seems she cut the call short to fabricate more lies about me to tell you tomorrow. This is sickening, Scott. I can't believe she would go to such lengths, I replied, feeling a mix of outrage and sadness. I don't care that she's my mother, she's wrong, and she must be held accountable for the pain she's causing us, Scott declared, his face set in determination. Despite the grim revelations, this ordeal strangely brought Scott and me closer together. We found comfort in each other's company, reaffirming our bond through this tumultuous time. As we spent the night consoling each other, our resolve only strengthened. The next day, I headed to work with a renewed sense of purpose, knowing that we were finally going to address this issue head on. Later, Scott called me, signaling that it was time to execute our plan. 
As usual, he added me to a conference call while Melissa was on the phone with him, unaware of my presence. Melissa wasted no time diving into her fabrications once the usual pleasantries were exchanged. Oh, what a day it's been, she began. You wouldn't believe what they've been saying. Some people are accusing her of embezzling funds and even bribing officials to get her way. I was so upset. I practically begged for your comfort yesterday. I played along, of course, but those rumors are true. Really? Is that how you remember our conversation from last night? I interjected, finally breaking my silence on the call. The surprise in her voice was evident as she realized I had been listening all along. I don't remember saying or doing any of those things at all, I stated calmly, my voice clear and unwavering. Melissa caught off guard, nearly choked on her drink. She hadn't expected to hear my voice, probably thinking she was hallucinating for a moment. Don't worry, Melissa. You're not imagining things. I'm here on a conference call with Scott. I've been listening to your conversations for the past three weeks, I revealed, my tone steady. Linda, I... How did you... I mean, I believe there's been a misunderstanding. Melissa stumbled over her words, her voice pitching with panic. I laughed coldly not about to let her twist the narrative. Oh, please don't insult my intelligence, Melissa. The act is up. I'm fully aware of the games you've been playing and the lies you've been feeding Scott. We're no longer going to be pawns in your schemes. I can't believe you'd be so cruel and manipulative for no apparent reason. What drove you to do this? Scott chimed in, his tone a mix of disbelief and frustration. Melissa retorted defiantly, So you think you're better than me now, Scott? Do you think you're some kind of hero trying to save the day? I haven't done anything wrong. I was just discussing hypothetical situations. It's not my fault you two misunderstood everything. You're so pathetic, Melissa. Even now, after being caught, you're trying to cover your tracks so clumsily, I countered sharply. Not to worry, though. I've recorded everything you've said. Let me refresh your memory a bit. I then played some of the audio recordings I had taken over the weeks. Listening to those cruel words sent chills down my spine, but I could tell that Melissa was panicking, her voice faltering as she tried to talk over the recordings, ineffectively attempting to defend herself against the irrefutable evidence being presented. Finally realizing she had no way out, Melissa dropped her guard somewhat, well, Linda, guess what? I don't care that you found out the truth. So what? What are you going to do? We all know that you're bad for my son. Bad for him in what way exactly? I pressed, eager to hear her justification. I don't know. You're hiding something. I can feel it. I don't have any evidence, but I can just tell that you're no good for my son. She snapped back, her argument weak and baseless. Her accusations, devoid of any real substance, only highlighted her desperation and inability to manipulate the situation any further. I'm going to expose you for the manipulator you truly are, you deceitful person. How dare you? Once I tell everyone in the family about this, they're all going to side with me, not you. No one will believe an outsider like you, Linda. Melissa hissed venomously. You're mistaken, Melissa. I responded calmly, the confidence in my voice clear. What you haven't realized, despite me mentioning it earlier, is that I've been recording this conversation too. And yes, that includes recording your conversation with me last night and capturing the text messages you sent to Scott. You've played your hand and now it's time you face the consequences. Not only are these conversations recorded, but we also have evidence of your continuous deceit. Scott added, his tone a mix of sadness and resolve. I hate to say it, but I'm done making excuses for you. I can no longer justify your actions or hope for your change. Melissa, sensing the gravity of her situation, suddenly shifted her tone. Baby Linda, let's discuss this privately. This information doesn't need to spread. I'll apologize, all right? Just delete those recordings. Let me come over right now. Linda, you're finishing your shift soon, right? Let's settle this over a cup of tea. 
Save it, Melissa. Your attempts to clean up your mess are sloppy at best. Do you have no shame? It's far too late for apologies, especially only after being caught. Who knows how long you would have continued this deceit if we hadn't confronted you today? I retorted sharply. We're going to tell everyone about your actions and there's nothing you can do to stop it. And just to be clear, I no longer wish to be in contact with you. I can't surround myself with your negativity any longer, Scott declared firmly. As promised in our conversation, Scott and I exposed Melissa in various family group chats. We informed our relatives of her manipulative tactics. Overcome with fear and embarrassment, Melissa left the family groups, but we added her back so she could face the consequences of her actions. Everyone in the chats was disappointed and appalled by her crude behavior. They unanimously agreed that she needed to be temporarily excommunicated from the family gatherings to reflect and hopefully improve her character. Melissa called us repeatedly, pleading for us to stop tarnishing her reputation, but we stood firm, reminding her of the bed she had made for herself. After exposing her, a deep sense of satisfaction washed over me. Melissa's hold over us had diminished and we were reclaiming control of our lives. I was confident that she wouldn't dare manipulate anyone like this again, 